Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hearthstone World Championships. I'm joined by my cupcake brother, Crip. And uh, Crip, you that's guys right. have, <laughs> that's right. Best dressed. Best dressed NA right here. So uh, tell me a little bit, Crip, about your experience with BlizzCon weekend here. Well, it's been pretty great. Um, you know, when it comes to Hearthstone tournaments, my, when, I, when I come in, I kind of expect to see a lot of the same type of decks. And uh, I really have been pleasantly surprised in this case. Not only have we seen, um, you know, all the classes, uh, almost all the archetypes of each of those classes, but some of the tech choices that the players brought are, you know, wilder than I would imagine, especially for like the really big tournaments. Typically you see players just keeping a very safe approach, but we've we've actually seen almost the opposite of that. And it's, it's really made for a very exciting tournament. Which of the players so far has kind of like blown your mind with what they've decided to bring? Um, well, we've seen things like the refreshment vendor even. It's, there's a lot of instances where we see cards like that, but I think the the most interesting things is how players tackle like the macro strategy. For instance, to give an example like Thice, uh, Thice brought three decks that all kind of seemed a bit awkward, except maybe Freeze Mage, that is somewhat standard. But his goal was just to target very few specific aggro decks because in the Conquest format, his opponents are required to win with each of the decks. And he just tries to target that aspect of the game. And in doing so, he brings so many crazy decks to the table. And, and that's that's been really the, the, the most fascinating thing for me. Not only that, that they're willing to do that, but that it's worked so effectively. Well, thank you so much for your insight, Crip. We have one match left today, and it's starting really soon, so don't go anywhere. Nyria versus Purple. It's time for the last match of day number two here in opening week of BlizzCon's Hearthstone World Championships. Purple versus Nyria. One player will live and one must die a horrible death. Yeah, only one match remains. Metaphorically but, speaking. Yeah, only one match, but what a match it is. Yeah. The runner up from the European Championship and the North American Champion going at it, and the elimination is on the line. That's right. So we saw an opportunity to look at their class list. Uh, and you got to see some of their play earlier on, but only one player will end up surviving. This is the final straw for either Purple and either Nyria. By the way, my name is Fordan. I'm joined by Savitz and Amaz. For anybody who's not, uh, we're introducing ourselves. We didn't need to do that at the beginning. Do want to get that out of the way. It's very rude of me. Uh, Amaz, you come in as a former teammate of Purple, and you've been able to practice with him a lot. Have you been able to communicate at all with him since his vic or sorry, his loss yesterday? Yeah, I haven't been. Um, but then uh, he's been talking to uh, you know my manager Brent a lot, and um, yeah, he seems he seems pretty fine. He's uh, you know determined to win the whole thing, and uh, this is the point to do it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is do or die. And uh, he's facing against Nyria, also a very spectacular player. So uh, their lineups are very similar. Uh, it will pretty much come down to technical skill level, in my opinion. Here. That's right. They're playing some very tricky decks, too. I think one thing that they were looking forward to specifically was the Freeze Mage Mirror, mm -hmm. which might realistically be something that happens. Another interesting dynamic is that it's Europe versus America, the classic debate within the Western community. Who's going to come out ahead? And I know there's a lot of intensity, especially on the European side. They feel offended that Americans or even men or, or even people from America, because you know, purple <laughs> is technically Canadian. Right. Um, but you know, we, we call it the Americas region. They're even offended. Like, why would you even involve us in that conversation? Oh. We're so much above them. Ain't that right, Savitz? Yeah, I guess. Uh, there's a little <laughs> bit of truth to that, but <laughs> oh, there are some okay-ish wow. players from NA as well. Wow. <laughs> Maz is like, well, oh, I'm in Asia, God. so... The Canadians yeah. are really nice. They're really kind. Absolutely. And uh, they're doing well, too. <laughs> Hot form is through to the winner's match. Purple can potentially join him in the round of eight if he wins this match. And, and he's going to start off with Druid versus the Freeze Mage. Now, this is a tricky matchup for the Freeze Mage generally speaking, and uh, part of the reason why is because Druid can put on a lot of pressure. Purple being able to grab these wild growth early on will help, help him hit some really powerful minions earlier than expected to. Yeah, Nerea going very aggressively here, choosing the coin out the loot hoard on turn one, following it up with the Blood Mage Stalinus. He wants to deal damage early on, and Purple, well, he just... No, no, you don't swipe here. Just wild growth hero power, right? 
Um, it's not the Do worst thing to swipe. He I mean, you're playing to. damage anyways, and yeah. it's an efficient way to, <laughs> right. you know, clear his minions. Plus, like, if you use the second wild growth, it means that uh, you lost a card, right? The yep. wild growth does represent a turn 10 card, even though it costs you two mana. So the swipe there wasn't too bad, given the hand right now. Yeah, not bad at all, considering the hand. At six mana, there was nothing he could have casted. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, he, he could he can still play the Druid of the Claw, but that one ma extra mana crystal would not have helped him this turn. But with that Angel of Lore pickup, he might be hoping that, uh, or Where maybe regretting it a tiny bit that he ended up uh, not casting the Wild Growth on board. We'll see. I think for now, the Druid of the Claw is still a very logical thing to follow. Two swipes often can get clunky because you're trying to put on pressure. And more likely than not, he's going to try to be aiming to hit minion curve, like you said. And outside of the Ancient of Lore, what else does he really have curve-wise? So. Oh, that's not a not the best draw in the world. So he is going to go Wild Growth since he has the Ancient of Lore. I guess he can refill a little bit of hand that way. But this turn is a little bit awkward. Yeah, definitely not the turn 6 that Bevan was hoping for. Or turn 5, since he wildly brought it on oh, yeah. But The 6th yeah. turn. The 6th mana <laughs> turn. Meanwhile, Nyria has some interesting you know, situations. Like, first, he has all, both of his Ice Spears, so he's guaranteed to get Ice Block, unless it gets silenced by a Keeper, which is something that Druids have been exploring more. Um, before, the, the idea was to keep those silences for the Doomsayers, but now a Druid just cares about putting on the pressure mm -hmm. and denying that Ice Block. And playing a 5-10 taunt here with the Ancient of War is pretty much going to guarantee a creature on the board. Yeah, that's... So. Very difficult for Nairia to remove. It's pretty much just Doomsayer. For removing that, you're not gonna fireball it twice or anything like that. Such a sharp contrast from the previous series where Nilio was very meticulous <laughs> with how every turn. Yeah, both went, players. You know? Both players yeah. seem very confident and they like doing their moves really, really quickly. Another thing to consider is the dynamic of how Druid's armor comes into play, because if it can sneak in some armor, even if you do have a perfect scenario of Alex Strazi on your opponent to 15, right. you might have effective 17 to 19 health, which gives you an extra turn maybe against Burn. So that's something to keep in mind. I know some players like Gara, for example, mm -hmm. um, he really loves to armor up as much as he can. Like he'll even like innervate armor up if he I has that opportunity. That's right. So. It's really like two different strategies, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a warrior strategy. Half a hero power is good enough sometimes against freeze mage, but the more consistent one is to go for the face. You know, pluck that uh, pluck that ice block so they can't Alex Straza and play another ice block at the same turn and kill them that way. Yeah, but, just keeping the pressure on. Yeah, but Nairia seems to be able to handle the pressure quite well. He's still sitting at 31 health with a nice block up, so yep. uh, pretty well done by him. Considering the ice lands here, but chooses to not use it in this situation. Yeah, now the swipe on the uh, anti heal bot protects him from flame strike a little bit more, so that way he has some more pressure. And he does sneak in that armor up as well. Instead of opting to innervate out the shade, keeping his options open too, because he ne you don't know if he picks up a second savage roar, and all of a sudden he has that 12 damage or 12 mana, excuse me, available for 22 damage. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a lot. Nairia picking up is another blizzard, casting it here. Unfortunately, with the remaining two mana, he won't be able to do all that much. Just bringing off the ancient of lore. Oh, second that's an ancient of lore. lore. Yeah, definitely a good draw. For, uh, for purple in this situation. Not sure if he's gonna use it here to draw. He might also keep it for healing later on. That's right. One thing to consider too, again, uh, can you put yourself out of range? The dynamic has changed a lot though with Emperor Force and you know, you're not necessarily just safe, as safe as it used to be. Yep. He does draw. I wouldn't have blamed him for healing the Ancient of War for five to play around uh, Blame Strike a little bit. Yeah, but, that would've been good. Yeah, but drawing those cards, I mean, <laughs> that's never bad. Yeah, Purple does indeed choose to play the Shade here. Once again, Flame Shook is so detrimental. Mm -hmm. There's no more Blizzards, but still, it's a real possibility that Nairia has it, so he goes, away, goes ahead and armors up instead. I yep. wonder if uh, Purple's by any chance also fishing for something like Lotheb to seal the game as well. Oh, yeah. That's a really powerful tool that often trumps Mage's Trump, which is Ice Block, mm -hmm. to give it one extra turn and then you stall the turn. Now that he's using f cards like Frost Nova, and if you can get that Ice Block number two out of the way, then you'll be in a really prime position to win. Sure. And like you said, he might be fishing for the second Savage Roar for a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And he should have plenty of time to pick it up. Nairia here, he's actually forced to use the Frost Nova if he wonder. wants to keep his Ice Block intact. Right, because with the 13 or 14 damage on board plus the, uh, the Force Nature Savage Roar, mm -hmm. 
That's what, 30 damage? That's like 34 wow. damage. 30, 34 damage? Yeah. Right, you have to count the actual plus damage. <laughs> right. I might also be thinking about Fireball on the Ancient of Lore. Oh no. That ice, ice Barrier, barrier is... would keep him alive. Yeah, 36. It's more yes. than 35, actually, because there's an Innervate uh, sure. for the hero part. But now he just goes ahead and Ice Lances just in case to heal for five. Yeah, which could end up paying off, depends on what purple draws. It is a Belcher. Belcher. Belcher, of course, being one of the more interesting choices in Druid these days because the five mana slot is highly competitive compared to a year and a half ago. What's the advantage of like running Belcher, do you think, over well, anything else in Druid? Yeah, well, it's uh, more of an anti-aggro card. Uh, it does leave two taunts and uh, at the cost of like uh, one attack and one health compared to Druid of the Claw, for example. Mm -hmm. And of course, some people prefer running Harrison, but uh, I guess Purple feels pretty confident in the weapon matchups that he feels like he wants to play Belcher instead. Sure. Yep. Sense. It yep. is also sticky, so if it does end up getting wiped by even Doomsayer in the worst case scenario, you do have a small little token that allows you to attack with Savator as well. Right. Nate, we are really looking for the Flame Strike here. He will get two chances to draw it. Once with the, with the Acolyte and uh, from the top of his deck. He could potentially even ping the Acolyte to get the triple draw, but then he won't be able to ping anything else. Mm. Alright. Just have a Frost Nova. He might also be trying to hope, hoping to find a Doomsayer. For oh, that Doomsayer that's exactly Nova. what you want to get. the Flame right. Strike. Well, the Flame Strike allows him to clear almost everything. Yeah. But then there's so many minions that pop out of the Death Rattles. You don't know what the Shredder is going to generate, the 1-2 oh, yeah. token. And if that, let's see. So he has uh, 20, 21 damage with the Inch of Lore and Savage Roar. So uh, these two minions actually need to be not Ooh. Doomsayer. <laughs> Yeah. To be uh, lethal yeah, or a pop minion. block. Even yeah, a any zero minion. attack minion. Yeah, even the uh, zero one could do. So, but there's no zero ones. So uh, maybe maybe the Frost Nova in that case is the would be a better play. That, sure. that would be a thing. Yeah. Frost Nova does allow you to play these two smaller minions as well, the Loot Hoarder and the Mad Scientist. That? That'll help make Flame Strike more effective in the next turn. And that's exactly what Naria um, sees. I believe both of the ice barriers were already played, so that's unfortunate for Nairia. That mad scientist will not find a secret with the death rattle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Having that second force of nature is pretty nice to help you clear some of these minions. Right. And again, he's almost in like warrior range of like, he's, you know, five extra armor here. So even Alex Strauss, he's gonna be back at 20, and that's really hard to generate that much damage. Right. Nairia's using like Ice Lance trying to be defensive, so that reduces his reach. Oh, now that Nairia found his second Ice Block, he can go a little bit more aggressive and set up for like a two turn kill, right? Yep. Uh, once your first Ice Block is popped, do some damage, do another Ice Block, and then finish with Pyroblast. Sure. That, that would be his game plan. Oh, yeah. And uh, Purple still considering innovating out the second Shredder here. Oh. Knows that even if there is a flame strike, it will still the pilot will still survive. And uh, yeah, he does end up innovating. It's likely to survive, although there's now two chances for Doomsayer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Those Doomsayers, they could absolutely flip the game around right, yeah. in Naria's favor. Twice the, the possibility of Doomsayer is still very, very yeah, low. It's still only like two out of. 80 to 2. How many are there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to it's do. very low. What yeah. To do. Well, you pretty much get feel like you're guaranteed to get your ice block pop, so you have to flame strike. The explosive ship would also help maybe I clear the body. No, those are minions. Actually good. Yep, I mean, 1-1. One, one, not the greatest, but it still uh, doesn't hurt the purple. That's right. All right, so, so here it's 4 damage plus another 6 for Savage Rose, so 10 plus 14. It's 24. It's 24. Yeah, so Naria doing the math right now. He might end up ice lancing the Protein, uh, sorry, the Amani Berserker in this. Sure. Situation, just to prevent Purple from popping mm. the ice block. Right. It's so key to hold on to your ice block because it gives you an additional turn to potentially Alex Straza oh, yeah. and maybe even set up a way to win. Personally, I really like the ice lance here, and he does go for it. It's so likely for Purple to have the combo. He knows that it, unless. Like, if, if Purple had only one Force of Nature, it's unlikely that he would have used it like he did. That's right. And once again, Purple pressing the Hero Power button, going up to six armor now. Right, yeah. So now, again, the question becomes, you know, not only are you, how are you surviving as Nairia, how do you win from this position? He's going to have to be really dependent on Ooh, whatever he's no. able to draw here. Wow, he has um, pretty much 
all the tools to win the game, but he just needs to navigate them correctly. In the correct order, that is. Yeah, the problem here is that Purple has those six armor that he has accumulated over the over the last turn. So if he yeah. went aggressive with the Alexstrasza, the Alexstrasza doesn't ac actually put Purple down to 15, but Purple would still be at 21, mm -hmm. effectively. He does have the Naria does have the Emperor to um, you know yeah. see if he can do multiple turns, but if he plays that, the ice block might be popped. So. Yep. Definitely tricky. Could also go for the arcane intellect if he's playing double flame strikes. That would be a great pickup. Okay. He's gonna part ways with fireball. Yeah, get rid of the armor. Oh, I, I like this. Wow, that actually lets him play the yeah. Alex Ross and the second ice block on the same turn. But the problem is he's still missing that two damage, right? Pyroblast and Frostbolt is not That's enough. That's true. But then what does Purple do right now? He does need to try one to clear and try one to pop the Ice Block. So a little bit of math here. He should be able to do that, yeah, exactly. easily. Yeah, attack with the highest damage first and then work for the smaller ones. Yep. And you can put your opponent down to one or two. It doesn't really matter because you have Keeper of the Grove. No, you have exactly one that's good. And then the kill on them for Thorson. Beautiful. Doesn't lose a single minion either. Some people might get careless and trade minions when they don't need to. You can always use the Treants. Yep. Strong turn from Purple here. And now we are back. Doomsayer. But there's no freezes left for Nairia. And exactly, there's like two keepers that Purple didn't use yet. Right. Nairia's in a very awkward situation. He's also held onto the big game Hunter, so Alex Straza doesn't even do anything onto the board. Yeah. It just immediately dies. So this should be checkmate, effectively, over the course of two turns. It might not be. If, if he, uh... Huh. Oh. He has to go defensive, yeah. Right. I feel like he just has to do it. And Purple doesn't have any more uh, spells in his hand to, to kill a Nairia right now. Guide my land. That's true, but he doesn't necessarily uh, need it either because it's like Freeze Mage has used up almost everything outside of its uh, second Frost Robot, I believe. I'm a little bit surprised the Purple didn't draw his own Amani for uh, for one here to, to enrage it for that extra damage. Mm. I see, I guess it doesn't matter since it's yeah. lethal next turn anyways. I guess. Yeah. The thing is like, Nairia's win condition is Antonidas now, right? But first he needs to clear the board, so drawing a Flame Strike perhaps would be really good. Yeah, if if he plays two, <laughs> if he doesn't play, if he only plays one flame strike, so I, I believe he had a heal bot in his deck. Yeah, he, he did. So uh, that might he, he might have got the second flame strike to put, to uh, fit that heal bot in. Yeah, that's right. He, he would probably get things like a sec, like another acolyte of pain or. In this case, he's going fast over doomsayer. double doomsayers. <laughs> double doomsayer is better than one. Yeah, but purple with the double keeper of the grove. Right, but is this? This might be lethal. If you silence. Not quite, yeah. No, not you know, quite. if he attacked with the five damage of my Berserker, yeah, it would have been, been lethal. Yeah, you're right, you're yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's double keeper all the way across the board. Uh, That's like, mean. Is the last kind of flame strike <laughs> or not? I don't think it is. I'm out of cards. And last card. Freeze, Freeze Mage might die from fatigue, which is pretty much the case here. That yeah. does it. Game one in the books. Purple off to a very strong start. And, you know, he was basically saying that his Freeze Mage, or sorry, his Druid is something that he was, you know, being afraid of because um, he doesn't know how it's going to interact with stuff like, you know, the, the Paladin, which he doesn't necessarily have. He feels pretty confident in it, but Paladin's always one of those things that can just, you know, take that game away from Druid with better tempo. All right. And Definitely. very good technical play there by Purple. I mean, you s we see that in the middle of the game, he kept on abusing the Druid Hero Pyre to gain the armor, thereby forcing Nairia to just sling a fireball and, um, yeah, played around Ice Block really well. So, yeah. very good game. All those armor ups really added up and in Purple's favor. Mm -hmm. That 6 extra HP was absolutely huge. Yeah. Another thing that I believe Purple was discussing uh, with some of the other players was how does Rogue fare off against Freeze Mage versus the Paladin versus Freeze Mage? Because that's the primary difference. If you look at the, the lineup, they look very similar across the board. And Rogue has been so out of the meta for a long time that I feel like I'm not very well versed with how it is up against Freeze Mage these days. Do you guys uh, have a good idea? Well, I would rather play the Freeze Mage, but the Rogue can do things with, with oil sometimes and dish out a lot of damage, even yeah. from the hand. If, uh, if uh, Purple is playing the South Sea deck and 
Do you think it performs uh, better than the Secrets Paladin on Maz against Freeze Mage if they were to line up like that? Oh, I would definitely prefer Secrets Paladin instead. You just have so much pressure on the board uh, because every turn you just establish something and then, you know, you have the big swing cards, you know, Mysterious Challenger, Dr. Broom, Tyrion. It's really hard for a Freeze Mage to remove those minions. Whereas the Rogue, you know, half of your deck or maybe even more than half are spells, right? So if the if the Mage can just remove all the Rogue's minions, then you, you really have nothing else to attack with. Okay. Well, I guess he's really happy then that he's able to get that first game one win. Mm -hmm. We got a chance to sit down also with Purple to talk about what makes him happy in general. Is there a place that he goes to to get his thoughts off the game? Here's what he had to say. I'm gonna find my happy place for this tournament so I, I, don't, I don't get the nerves on stage. That's a great idea. Definitely gonna have some bars in it and it's also gonna be on ice. And there's gonna be penguins named Poncho who wear Mexican hats and have nachos in them. Yeah. Can we go there now? Well, good thing he's from Canada because he, he's very close to this happy place <laughs> or maybe he actually lives uh, right there. Purple, of course, hailing all the way from uh, northern Canada there. And he is connected both to the Canadian and the French community. So, Viz, you were having fun watching that segment. What, what were you laughing about? What were you giggling? Yeah, it's just that uh, he's now one game closer to his happy place, I suppose. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm sure that one of his happy places would be the, would be the World yeah. Championship Finals. Uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's reality, too, right? Happy place is always supposed to be a fictional garden. You know, in your, right. in your sanctuary. <laughs> oh boy! Well, this is what we were talking about at the beginning oh. of the series. The Freeze Mage Mirror, one of the most complicated uh, matchups, technically, because there's a lot of small nuances. There is something that I do want to bring up that I think will be the primary difference maker is that there's a second heal bot in Purple's Freeze Mage deck. That's and true. That literally might be the inch that helps him go the full mile. Yeah, heal bot does mess up a lot of calculations from the Freeze Mage Mirrors. And uh, I would give the edge to purple, just because of that addition. But if you draw it early on, if you draw both of those early on, it might hurt your your uh, guard draws and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the the games get decided by something like a good Emperor or an Antonidas. And uh, the heal bots might not matter, but he might have a tiny edge because of that. Mind if I roll knee? And it's That's very right. interesting because you never want to attack your opponent once they put up a secret. Uh, I spare it might you know, turn to healing exactly. um, for a freeze mage. So for, yeah. for purple, he could have just played an ice block at turn three and stopped all <laughs> attacks. Just, you know, you know, bluffing that it's an ice bearer. Yeah, that's true. Maria it, here, getting some, some damage in early, but mm -hmm. like those, those heal bots are going to be a, at least a little bit effective now. It's funny too, because the dynamic was like, whoever could pop ice block first was in a big advantage because if you pop ice block first, then you know, they have to respond to it and play Ice Block yeah. and you have an overwhelming advantage. But because of the heal bots and the way they interact, uh, popping the Ice Block doesn't always guarantee victory. You might overextend, lose exactly. all your damage, and then lose the game because of it. Mm -hmm. So some, sometimes the idea is maybe the first person who pops the Ice Block is at a huge disadvantage if they go all in too fast. <laughs> right, exactly. Hey, speak to me. Freeze Mage at the end of the day, Alex Strother can target yourself to heal for 14 health if you're down to one. And then with two heal bots, that's a full 30 health yeah. that you can gain. You go back to 30 like exactly. nothing happens. Well, Emperor Thorson on a full hand practically from Purple. Yeah, no hesitation, just going for it immediately. Good for Nairia, he did pick up a Frostbolt, so with the Acolyte, Frostbolt and the ping, he will be able to deal with that. And he, whoop, he might have even picked up something else, but Frostbolt, very efficient way to remove it. Yep, works out quite all right. All right. So the ping and... Could even Doomsayer, no, I don't know. I think you want a Doomsayer if you anticipate something like like Emperor, for example, on turn six, or you anticipate you know Alex Straza coming. In this case, um, I guess he just drops it so that way his opponent can't take advantage of the board. If he had like Emperor and he does a bunch of fireballs, I kind of like it. That, that card tends to not be too valuable in this particular matchup, so why not play it? You kind of get the, the initiative here, and he could just uh, well. Well, it, it kind of nice? helped Purple draw a card <laughs> and put it in play. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, hand management in Freeze Mage Mirrors are often very tricky since mm -hmm. there are a lot of, lots of spells that you can't play. Yeah. Sometimes you just see Freeze Mages just play a Blizzard with no nothing on right. the opponent's side just to get rid of a card. Yep. You see that with Flame Strike the most because it has lowest impact. Blizzard 
in Iceland maybe can kill Antonidas, but you're generally speaking like you're correct. The the Blizzard, like what does it do? It just takes up hand space. He's not he's not there yet though. He's not at right. ten cards, so he can exactly. stand to draw another one. But when you're at the limit, it's like, well, what do I do? I'd be really surprised if Navia did not play the Doomsayer here because he know that Purple got a full hand Emperor effect, so there could be an Alex Straza coming down from Purple's side on next turn. So I, I would expect him to play the Doomsayer. We can see that it, it, it's kind of not that necessary. But uh, okay. yeah, there could have been that. Well, oh, no, it is, but it's but not discounted. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. And purple sitting at uh, nine cards, so he can just pass the turn back. Exactly. And this, th yeah, this matches all our reaction and uh, you know playing the cards oh. that matter. <laughs> so, so he has the Alex Straza play himself, but oh, he, he chooses to keep it instead. It. He wants He's to drop Doom's here now. He sh should. <laughs> I kind of feel like he should. Yeah. I mean, what, what, how, how would you, why would you hold on to it? Just the blizzard. Oh, burns the blizzard. Okay. But now that I think about it, you might be right for that. Uh, because Blizzard can stop an Alex Straza attack. That's true. So it is a little bit more valuable than Flame Strike. It, it does give stall because the Alex Straza is kind of like a buffed up, powered up fireball, right? Yeah. The end is coming! There's the Doomsayer. He wants to use it to take out the Alex Straza. But so this is a nice block pop. Yeah. yeah. He can do it with those discounts. He can he got double fireballs and a frostbolt. He, yeah, he can even save the one mana Frostbolt and the zero mana Icelands if he wants to. Yeah, of course you do because you have Antonidas, right? And once yeah. again, like Frodan said, exactly. you don't want to spread your damage too thin and then you can't finish out the game after popping two blocks, to going do. through Nairia's Alexstrasza, going through the uh, anti kill bot. But whoa! Wow. He's actually going to remove the Doomsayer. That is very interesting. Do a kind of like a resource battle. Yeah, so he's investing this Fireball to become eight damage. In a turn, if this Alex Straza can live, okay, and that makes it so that way Alex Straza attacks, and then you know Fireball plus Ping is uh, sure. is but, the kill. But we ha we can't forget about the Ice Bear still uh, yeah. in Aria's side there. Yep. But Aria going for down the Midas here. Yep, coin, coin Fireball, oh, coin Fireball, fireball. fireball yeah. He could also go for the Nova if he wants the two Fireballs in his hand mm -hmm. instead of one Fireball and a Frost Nova. But obviously the Fireball Fireball would kill the uh, so the Alex Raza. It seems that Nairi did this move because he just saw a fireball. It's like, oh, how how reasonable is the second fireball in Purple's hand as well, right? He might have to burn a Frostbolt Ice Lance. And in this matchup, the Frostbolt Ice Lance is super valuable. Right. I think what Purple wants is to bait out things like Yobot too. And one of the things that he was also emphasizing when we were talking about this matchup before the game was cornering your opponent and forcing him to make really bad decisions so that he has to use Heobot bef like before the ice block, and then all of a sudden you can really bully him. So I think he's trying to put on pressure, and that could explain ex why he's killing off Doomsayer as opposed to piping the ice block. Yep, here Neria has a lot of options. He could ping that play of Frost Nova, maybe the heal, but Undernighters from Purple's side is already used, so that heal, but is not really getting any better than it is here. That also set up the Alex Raza down to five, which means that the Flame Strike with Blood Mage or a Pink would uh, deal with that next turn. The Hillbot yeah. coming out here. He doesn't necessarily have to use the Nova if he doesn't want to, because he does have that Ice Barrier up. So that's going to effectively negate the damage from the Alex Raza. It's very cool because I'm thinking about what Nairia's win condition now is because he's playing very defensive. Right. I'm assuming that he needs to have a minion that sticks on the board, for example, his Alex Straza. Sure. Uh, after all these resource battle has uh, ended for the Alex Straza to actually hit Purple's face a couple times to win. Yeah. But again, now that um, he's used Heal Bot, he's one answer less in case his Ice Block gets put him at one. Mm -hmm. Because the problem with Ice Block, even if you draw the second one after you get popped, oh. you're going to be at 1 HP. Oh, oh now God. that is a very good draw. That's pretty big. Yeah, oh, Purple's yeah. going to get three fireballs here. That's right. And um, not to mention that Antonis will absorb damage too. So it takes pressure away from him. Purple's in such a large advantage, and Nyria looks like he's almost out of options. Yeah. Now the thing is, uh, once again, Purple needs to pop the block, uh, reduce it down to, well, it doesn't really matter, right? It needs 13 damage to pop, and then Nairia's gonna heal for 15. So Purple's really looking for 28 total damage in his hand. Yeah, Nairia would love to heal up here, but if he chooses to play the... Well, in what? Wait, it doesn't have a heal, but... Uh, <laughs> right, he played it in the previous, then. Uh, it's, the, it's Purple with the double heal, but... So Nairia... He will be able to heal up with the Alex Straza a little bit later on, but right now he needs to deal with that Archmage Antonidas. 
playing the Thalnos as well is always very scary because, uh, you know, this game, this matchup does go to fatigue. That's right. Fatigue and another you thing. don't want to draw too many cards. Well, it, it's, it hasn't crossed that threshold yet because Nervia has still yet to hit his Emperor Thorson, for example. So I think he'd love to draw some answers at the moment. Purple oh, dealing one damage. That's <laughs> actually really key. Lots of pressure there. Yeah, saving those fireballs. It's an yeah, interesting he's, decision. He's making sure not to overextend again because he does. He, I think all, his plan might literally be the double heal bot and to just like outlasting my opponent and running him out of resources. Yeah, interesting. It's a very defensive approach to the Freeze Mage Mirror. I wonder if you're actually playing this match, if you're keeping track of how many fireballs are used. You know, if I was playing, I was like, I don't know, <laughs> purple still has like five, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Ice Barrier is still up, by the way, so purple is working with 22. And Perthorson finally comes into the hand for Nyria, giving him uh, a couple of options here. Yeah, Nyria not, to, not playing the the Alex Straza on his opponent because he has to save it for, for himself. There are no other ways for Nairia to heal up. He's only playing one heal button. And again, the I, Arcane Intellects, you know, how much are they going to be helping versus hurting at a certain point? Well, Flamestrike with the Thalnos does push one additional damage to the face. And that's exactly what you need, right? Uh, right now, Purple is counting 26 damage, 11 plus the 15 from Alex Straza. Mm -hmm. So he does have 26 damage yet. Might as well ping a couple more times. Yeah, this is getting so close. It's about th that extra heal what that purple has in his hand is what makes him a huge favorite in this. Yeah, and Iria has to dig deeper yet again for some more options. He can stop the attack on board by playing Ice Barrier. Ooh. And he will. Yeah, this definitely does suck a little bit for Nyria, since uh, yep. Antonidas is what uh, the Frostbolt Ice Lance wants to pair it with, not, not Alex Straza. No. Frostbolt plus Ice Lances uh, equals 11 damage. Mm -hmm. So in his mind, maybe he can try popping it in a couple of turns. But again, they're such low on cards. It's like five or six cards or right. less. I mean, if he can uh, actually reduce purple down to one health, and purple is out of cards, he'll take that one fatigue damage and die, actually. So, um, that's a math there. I wonder how many cards are um, in their decks. It's kind of relevant now, yeah. Well, two cards for Nyria, so right. the second Arcane Intellect's out of the question. Oh, purple's sitting at a very healthy five cards, yeah, so he's lots of wiggle less room. Cards. Yeah, well, Nyria had cards. to draw a lot of cards. You know, fish for damage. the Thorazon. Oh! Now, that's that introduces a that's new wild card, because the Pyroblast uh, it does end up being used here and it put him down to three. But again, that heal bot, that second heal bot is so big. Yeah, but you do not want to use heal bot until after your block, block gets popped. Right. Because just for the Alex Straza, right? I wonder. Yeah, I mean, you're never going to have 10 mana floating, so might as well power blast yeah. this turn. <laughs> How many Float 10 mana. mana. <laughs> 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 Seems unlikely. Yeah, that Fatig is just going to. Oh. To kill Nairia first, it seems like a likely out outcome of this. Right, so he's going to force uh, his opponent to Alexstrasza now. And playing the Doomsayer means that the Doomsayer removes the Alexstrasza, so very, very good play here. Right. The end is coming! Not to mention that Nairia is actually out of cards, so he is actually forced right. to use Alexstrasza, otherwise yep. a ping from purple would kill him. He has to do it. He has to Alex. Um, what else would you do? I guess pop his, his ice block in the process? Frostbolt his face? Yeah. No, but then you give up your ice lances too. Oh, that is terrible. So, w double ice lance maybe then? But then how do you have damage to finish the game? You know he has two know. heal bots. <laughs> Bro, that's really hard questions to answer, <laughs> right? He's gonna just toss in the Frostbolt. Right. His, maybe yeah. his hope is mad scientists can do some damage. Hmm. Wow, down to the mad scientists do damage. A lot of death, a lot of revivals, but looks like Purple still in firm control of this game. This is where the Ice Block and Heal Bot combination is devastating. I think Nairia's oh, last hope was No, the... actually, Nairia can pop here with the Fireball Ice Lance, Ice Lance Bing. Wow. He can not only pop, but he can pop Purple at 1 oh, HP. Oh, man. Then Purple needs oh. to actually finish the game next turn. No, it actually looks like Nairia might be able to take this. Wow, oh, you're right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's the second ice block too. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And the and the Alexstrasza from purple is already played. 
Yeah, and there's both of his heal bots. Supposedly, yeah. Purple still has a burn spell, maybe? Oh, that could right. do it. Neria is going to take Fatih for two. Yep, so uh, Purple needs to do 11 damage. So basically, Neria, he, he, can, he can do all this, and he can also squeeze and dice block. Wow. No, like, no, ice block doesn't really matter for Neria right now. No, not really. Well, it prevents him from being able to get burned to death in the following turn. Um, well, he's taking fatigue right? damage, right? So, um, you know, Purple would just, like, not do 13 damage. We'll just do 11. And let the fatigue damage kill him. But, yeah, Purple's in a little bit of an awkward situation here. I mean, might as well play to Ice Block. Uh oh! oh yeah, Purple's not happy oh. about that. And, oh. I think his last card was, was probably the burn. Oh, is it the fire? Is it another fire? Is the fireball? That, that was, that was so brutal. No! You don't get to see it, man. I think it is. Yeah. Was it? Oh. it was the last fireball. He needed that. Oh, and man. It was his second to last card. That, that's oh. right, counting fireballs, man. It's really Yikes. hard. Oh, you saw them purple's face as well. I really was... stole that, I think, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not to be understated that uh, purple's deck was much better equipped for that matchup mm -hmm. specifically. And losing it was very brutal. Yeah. Very clutch, and uh, Naria made very good decisions. I mean, you look back at the game and all those meticulous things that he did. Yeah. Uh, all worked out to this, this um, sol uh, solution, I guess. So very yeah. well done. What yeah. an amazing game that was! It's yeah. usually it's not that, that type of long mirror matches are not everybody's favorites, but I enjoyed that one. It was so back and forth. Absolutely. There's amazing. definitely a lot of chess matches about it, and it's one of those things where we're following Purple's uh, line very clearly because we knew his game plan from the from the start. And yet, Nairia was able to fight against it and outlast it. And that's something that, um, you know, again, one damage mattered the entire time. Every single time he pinged his opponent versus, like, you know, controlling the state of the board ended up being the difference maker because he won by that one damage. Right. Oh, <laughs> Pebble, Pebble looks so devastated after that game. His reactions yeah. to, to not <laughs> well, basically, not winning or not drawing the yep. last fireball there. He really needs to, like, reset his mindset. It's only 1 1. Anything can happen. Yep. Both freeze, uh, sorry. Uh, Nairia's Priest Mage is now out, and Purple's Druidist. That might give a slight edge to Nairia, since yeah. the Druid is pretty good if he can to match it up against uh, Purple's Priest right. Mage later on, but still, it's anybody's game. Yeah, that's true. Um, we'll have to see if Purple's Rogue is going to give him the edge, and uh, yeah, because we see that Nairia's Paladin is, you know, it's looking pretty strong uh, against this lineup, and of course, the Druid against the uh, Priest Mage is really, really powerful. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is really cool to see these two players match up. It's living up to the name, at least, Purple versus Nyria. Uh, and Freeze Mage is one of their favorite decks. We got an opportunity to sit down with one of them and talk about why that is. I remember when I played uh, Endless Fireball Mage. To make combo happen, you need uh, double sorcerers, double echo, and then just uh, do this. And with Antonidas, in hand, you just do Emperor and all cost 10 mana. So you play all four sorcerers and Antonidas, and then just start doing fireballs for free. And it was so satisfying to kill your opponents with it. It's, it's just amazing. All right, well, we found out that Nairi is a really cool person because <laughs> he really likes to <laughs> do endless fireballs. Yeah. Uh, however, I think that's the only infinite damage loop in, in Hearthstone. Is that the correct? only Exodia. Is is there is there actually another one that I'm missing? Um, is there a way to reduce your hero power to zero? Because I don't think so. Mm, yeah, that would make that. Would, yeah. I don't think that's the case. There was the uh, knife juggler and um, Pandaren, uh, the youthful brewmaster, back with mana Right, around. right, yeah. right. Back, back then. Yeah, and of course, uh, patron was an infinite com uh, damage combo. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, felt, it certainly <laughs> felt like it, right? Yeah, exactly. If you rounded up, it, it <laughs> definitely felt like it did. We'll see if that ends up being the case somewhere later. Patron has made it through to the winner's round. Meanwhile, we have both these guys trying to finish it up. A very cool series so far. Game number three, Rogue versus the Druid. And this is a matchup that, again, a lot of people have always talked about which is favored, which they feel comfortable with. Um, Purple feels like you know Rogue is one, you know one of those classes that can beat anything, yeah. and that's why he brought this event. Is it good against Druid though? What what, what do you weigh in? Yeah, I would say that Rogue is really good against Druid uh, when they play like a five mana drop, perhaps like a Druid Claw, and just you just use a two mana sap and just return it while developing your own creatures. Um, that's really the 
you know, main way of doing it. And of course, preparation also helps. Oh, yeah. uh, you just, it's an innervate for three. So you just have a better innervate, right? Prepa it really depends on if the Druid plays a minion first. Though. Preparation in this matchup is absolutely huge. Something like Violet Teacher prep sap on turn four oh, is wow. extremely difficult for the Druid to deal with. Nairia starting with an excellent hand here. He does have innervate coin and a wild growth. And he is also curving out nicely afterwards. Yeah, um, it's really, um, it's interesting what, what, what Nairia decides to go with here. It's always the awkward yeah. spot of, if you coin a Wild Growth, I guess you get a uh, Innovate uh, Azure Drake, for example. But if you do this play, you get to push a lot of damage early on. It's not like Rogues can actually answer the Shredders, apart from Hero Power Backstab. Well, Sap, kind of. That's true, Sap deals does with it, deal I suppose. with it. Yeah. It Two for one, so it kind of like removes one of those cards for uh, the inner base effectively. Oh yeah, sure. And the coin counts as half of it because it helps you ramp into other things too. Okay. But it doesn't really give an advantage for purple still. Nerea has the wild growth. He will be able to play the pile de sure again on his turn three. Wow. Although the backstab does give purple more options to answer that shredder mm -hmm. and develop board with a weapon left over. Yeah. There's the shredder again. Purple does have yep. the du duels to deal with now. He might. He most likely shouldn't need this backstab at all, but it's always there as a, as a backup option. All right, we'll see. One minion drops out of the shredder. Wow, Perfect! It's automatic. It's very good for purple. Usually, Zapomatic scared the heck out of you, but not this one. <laughs> not in this situation. Maybe I'm following his curve perfectly, drop, dropping that Azure Drake. It's not that great, though, for the tempo. Oh my goodness, that's a lot wow. of damage. Yeah, but no minions. No minions. Purple would have preferred to have. Maybe something like Azure Drake would be perfect, but also a pilot straighter would have been great. Yeah. Here, I guess uh, you could backstab Flurry and just, uh, you know, uh, do the clean way. Because, I mean, the poison and the oil would be really good on a fresh dagger, uh, not on the one durability. Yeah. So he, he, he might prep the oil after re equipping right. equip the dagger here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a prep oil right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that but could happen. I think maybe he feels like preparation if he picks up other spells like Sprint or something else could be really beneficial. But the problem with that is, like you said, there's no minions. And yeah. usually you want to have prep be your way to secure minions on the board. That's right. And if he went for that play and the SI agent got removed, he would be left with almost nothing. Just, right. the, just the deadly poison and the plate fluttering. And of course, their big weapon. It is a lot, though. Combined with everything hitting, it would be 18 damage. You get 6 on the SI7 agent and, and 12 damage with the weapon. And then you have to do nine more, but without a huge card count. And this is, um, you know, partially why Rogue really wants to be on the coin because they have the extra card. Right. Yeah, you know, Purple will be struggling. Yep. Really needs to find the uh, Sprint Knight now for Purple. But on Nairia's side, seems like a pretty good Emperor. Emperor does demand an answer. Yep. He's still co considering all of his options. He could also keep her hero power to, if he wants mm. to remove that SI agent desperately. But that Emperor on turn six, how do you say no to it? That's right. Nerea has to be wondering, you had five mana, and you re-equip the weapon and pass. What do you have? But it certainly isn't the, the point that he needs to focus on. Purple, by the way, picks up Lotheb, so he has an opportunity yeah. to go really aggressive with prep, oil, and then hitting the Lotheb, trying to lock down his opponent's spells and being super aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just going to go for it here. Can't blame him. So much damage. Wow. That's right, and I, I like it. Got to go to the dome and show Nairia that you're willing to take it all right here, and you put him into a very defensive posture. Yeah, but Nairia does have a full clear here. He can charge the crew through of the claw, or he could just, uh, huh? He could even keep his one of his minions if he wants to keep her silenced. The the, uh, the agent, yeah, but he still right. needs to attack with the emperor into the into the lotep, so he would only keep the druid of the claw, which is probably not worth it. But yeah, clearing your opponent's uh, minions here does seem like a very good idea. Purple's only down two cards. Uh, you don't expect those to be, you know, sprint or anything like that because preparation was just used. There was no prep sprint, right? Yeah. I would yeah. really love to see that full clear here. Yeah, sprint would have to be off the top if that was the case in Purple's hand. Nairia also uh, has such good, like, minion quality. He has Ancient of Wars and Lores. And both of them are hard for a rogue to deal with. You can't really sap those targets now that you've gotten this far, unless they have a really strong board. A very strong play here. I think a lot of players might have been tempted to just go for an Ancient of War there, put it on, but uh, 
like we mentioned, that there's not really that many minions that Purple could have here, and this is only spells now. He could play his entire hand, but that yeah. doesn't deal enough. This is really awkward. It's like, well, I have more damage. Do I flurry this, or do I just camp it? Because right now, at max damage, uh, everything is 14, and that's assuming Druid is just like hero power and Ancient of War back up to 5 health. Yeah, that's fair pressure to play the board right now with Flurry. And yeah. uh, minus 12, set up a dagger and push for some damage. Yeah, he's just gonna go for it, yeah. Sure. And that means that this Ancient of War will be really powerful. Yeah, for sure. Never count out the rogue, though. One sprint could change it all. Yep, maybe a little bit low on health, so he, so he chooses to go for the 6 mana Ancient of War over the 7 mana to squeeze in that extra hero power. Yeah, once again, Drew Hero Power coming in to save the day. Yeah. Purple picks up a Violet Tissue. That would have been great earlier, but right now it doesn't match up all that well against the Ancient of War. Yeah, life of a rogue player in a nutshell, drawing the spells before the minions. <laughs> and uh, living to tell the tale is something you won't ever have because there's just so much power on the board after this Ancient of War gets dropped oh, and man. so much health. <laughs> My great, a big wall. Yeah, the Great Wall of Nairia comes up <laughs> and <laughs> drawing some emotes Whoa. in as well. The big blue wall. Those Ancient of Wars aren't movable at all. And I, I mean, Purple's not dead yet, yep. but he's just going to do what he can. The pressure is going in only one direction. Yep. And Nyria, I was trying to figure if he could pick up Savage or end the game, but he'd still. That's he, actually he would have it is it. lethal. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. The Force of Nature plus the swipe here. Exactly 10. Yep. Wow. 10 on the board, 10 from the hand, and Nyria is going to take a 2 0 lead over Purple. Wow, Purple is not happy with it at all. Nyria takes a comeback advantage here, being down 1 0, to potentially sending the America's champion back to Canada. Yeah, what can I say? Nairia had a very good starting hand there. Uh, after the innovative Shredder got sapped, he still had a wild growth to follow up. And um, yeah, Purple just drew way too many spells. Yeah, definitely pretty much a perfect hand from Nairia. Also played it flawlessly. So in that matchup, what, what more can you really hope for or do? It's one of those things too, where this is the, this is the risk you run with Rogue. This is why people consider Rogue to be uh, you know, a high risk, high reward deck. Or, you know, maybe even not that high reward sometimes if you feel like there's decks that do it but better. In a lot of cases, the rogue just ends up defeating itself more than you losing to your opponent, right? Yeah. yeah. You really exactly. need a good mix of minions and spells, and uh, it didn't quite get it there. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, there is the paladin, and, you know, rogue versus paladin, that can feel good at times, but, uh, you know, you're, of course, just like you said, any opportunity for Paladin to curve correctly from 1, 2, 3, 4 onwards uh, is, is a deck that's to be feared because it has some of the best plays available with the mini bot, with the muster for battle into Blessing of Kings, and then you hit Lotheb, Challenger, Boom, etc. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be really tricky for Purple to overcome it, um, but uh, you know he does have an opportunity. It's never over till it's over. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have game number four between these two players. In the meantime, enjoy a little segment between Purple and his father. The most clueless person about video games in my family has got to be my father, who's also my biggest supporter. So he, he supports what I'm doing without having any idea. Of, yeah, he, he'll, he'll be wearing like one of my, my, my jerseys at home and watching. The regional mug uh, that you guys gave me, uh, and he, he's showing it off his office, and, and no one else understands, but he's very proud. All right, so Papa Purple watching along. Trying to cheer on his son, which needs a little bit of help. He needs your energy. Yep. Let will, us know. <laughs> he will have to defeat Nairia's Paladin with both his mage and the rogue now. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, don't don't look so don't glum yet. I mean, this <laughs> 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 you see this, see this face, man. Instantly uh, lit up in a second, just like a Christmas tree, um, which we might be seeing, by the way. This it's often a uh, you know. A, a euphemism that we use for Paladin right. these days, calling it Christmas, Christmas Tree Paladin. Because forward. when you play that mysterious challenger, it lights up real quick with five right. question marks. Well, Purple's going to lead with the Freeze Mage first, and sure. Nairia has a couple of good answers. There is the Lothab that he probably is going to keep. Yep. True Silver does really help a lot too in this matchup. Against the Freeze Mage, you definitely keep the Lothab. 
certainly. And as long as you're able to hit those minions, I mean, Noble Sacrifice isn't going to be amazing. In fact, it helps Acolyte draw um, an additional card. Yep. But in this scenario, you just need to make sure to, to curve. You know, it, if your opponent thinks it's Avenge ever, he's going to have to re be very selective with how he pings. All right. Yeah. That explosive ship for purple is absolutely huge. Yeah. Against the Paladin, you need that early clear, and uh, the ship does provide that. It's like a consecration against Let Paladin. Let me finish. Yes. But you can even sometimes play it earlier. You can just play them too. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, the big challenge yeah. is that Paladin can put enough pressure to warrant some clears without it becoming truly a problem. And then you need, you know, both Exhaust Sheep and Blizzard. Right and, so. right. and the dagger misses. Uh, it does miss. But it's not a big deal. He does have the, the get down ready. Yeah. So uh, if he lands the juggle, Purple will not have the full clear with the Sheep being. Yep. It's a 50 50. We'll see if this uh, dagger hits. Yeah, maybe oh. really wants to hit it. Oh! It does. Nice. So that will prevent the full clear. That ends up uh, protecting the mini bot. At least just a divine shield for one turn. Purple still has the opportunity to uh, drop the, the sheep the next turn. However, this does make him susceptible to Blessing of Kings. And blessed, and I mean, you know, being blessed by a king is pretty dang good against a robotic <laughs> sheep. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, Nate, we are picking up the mysterious challenge. Wow. Everything is just uh, working out. Low well theft into right mysterious now. challenger right now. Very, yeah. very good curve. Yeah, it's, that's kind of perfect. <laughs> and not a single secret in his hand. That's also excellent. Yeah, um, I'm trying to imagine like what's the the best Let sequence. The blessing of kings allows the knife jugger to live. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you always do want to consider about whether or not you kill off the sheep. Or if maybe Nairia is considering not going for Blessing of Kings and going for Shredder instead, because he realizes on turn four you could just Fireball down whatever gets busted. That is true. The Shredder is really sticky. Yeah? I wouldn't be too surprised if he chose to go with that. But the Blessing of Kings, it does force out the Fireball. And if it wasn't there, yes. that would be another seven damage right. from the Juggler on the next turn. So it looks like he puts it on the Knife Juggler. Yep. Or Sir Juggler. Oh. <laughs> right. Got to use proper nobility titles here. Oh, well, he's down, Very though. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm here for. Well, uh, you know, Lotheb is available on curve. It's one of those things, though, that timing is really key on when you're able to play it and lock out the Freeze Mage. Yeah, the, the Lotheb battle cry would have been wasted here, so he's going to wait for a better opportunity. <laughs> Purple picking up the Mad Scientist is going to be very helpful. You know, you want to set up the secret, pull the Ice Barrier, or pull the Ice Block, and uh, navigate the, you know, situation a little bit better. But Mysterious Challenger, man, that's Four a 6-6. Six, six secrets. With uh, Redemption, too. Redemption is really, really powerful against yeah. uh, Freeze Mage. That's so strong right now. Well, it's uh, it, Redemption will be pulling most likely with the Noble Sacrifice if Nairia plays a second one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that will make sure that, like, you know, Shredder doesn't get... Redemption, because that's mm. like the really dangerous one. Where it's like, wow, he just got so many sticky minions. It's true. Nerea goes for it. Yeah, Nerea goes for that acolyte. He knows the acolyte would have drawn an extra card if he left it up, mm -hmm. because uh, Purple would have been able to use that to attack into the Noble Sacrifice. Yeah. And this is also very clever in that Nerea does reduce the Shredder down to health. So if Purple casts something like a Blizzard or something, that uh, minion that comes out of Death Rattle could actually attack. Yep. Right. Going for a fireball. So this will trigger the avenge and the redemption. A little bit surprised. So I guess he has to. Uh, he's planning to uh, bring off that mysterious challenge. You know, obviously, cannot leave after oh, six yeah. one. It's a super magma rager. Yep. Get down! Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of damage here. Um, the Nairia basically has salty dog on the field. This is Shredder. Well, I, I think this is an excellent turn for the load. Oh. Frost Nova will not be available for Purple yeah. if he had it in his hand. With with the low tip uh, effect, Frost Nova goes from 3 mana to 8 mana. And uh, all Purple can really do would be a Frost Bolt, Bolt which yeah. only deals with one minion anyway. Yeah. Yeah, or you can do with uh, Anti Kill Bot and the Loot Hoarder, or Ping, for example. Mm -hmm. But this yeah. is generally the time to do it, though. Yep. This is perfect. This is just perfect for the low tip. Yeah, you don't want to low tip on the turn your opponent's going to Alex Straza or yeah. basically play the game. Yeah, or or at best tie, right? Like he said, the Frost Nova usually just vacates low tip, yeah. so that way you stall out. And stalling is not the plan here, or not in the purple, 
Purple's plan here. Definitely needs to activate his heal bot or play some of his smaller minions. Uh, this situation does look pretty bad for Purple because even if he heal bots, the block is still going to be uh, popped here. That's right. And even with Frostbolt, it doesn't matter. Frostbolt still removes 8 damage. So, uh... I wonder what Purple's gonna do here. So if it's gonna get popped anyways, then do you instead opt to play the two small minions? Well, yeah, uh, Purple, it would have been an option. He's gonna go with the anti heal bot though here. He's gonna play it anyway. It's better power on board, I think, to maybe make Blizzard have higher impact. Yeah, if he had a Frost Nova in his hand, I'm sure he would have saved the, the, the heal bot for next turn. So with eight mana, he could have went Frost Nova into the anti heal bot to heal back up to nine. Mm. Important to note that uh, Nyria also has uh, muster for battle, so if he can get the health down to like one, you can also use that weapon to constantly threat. And Paladin's one of those classes that you know you always have to. Um, you, you never sometimes have that ability to finish the final point of damage, but having that one for life justice could be pretty key. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Nyria trying to hit. Yeah, Nyria trying to buff at one here. Right. Not quite. Can't quite do it. It would have been great because of the, the master for battle. For the following turn. And we do know that the secret is Avenge. So, yep. uh, oh, well, Purple could stabilize here, just kill off the Knife Juggler with the Mad Scientist. Right, but he has to get second Ice Block. Right? Oh, no, we can just Blizzard away. Uh, Blizzard because, works. yeah, Nyria does, didn't pop him at one. Right? Oh, right, right. So he should stay alive. I mean, right. unless it's Consecration or something. Oh, Consecration would be pretty good. Purple looked a little bit unhappy there after the secret came out, so. But if it's Ice Barrier and a weapon comes out, then he's pretty happy about it. Right. right. And uh, let's see what Nyria picks up here. Consecrate might do the trick. No! no. The creeper. That's not it. Yeah, Consecration's not also good. sometimes in the deck and sometimes not. That's it, true. It does depend on the player. Yeah, and some players uh, play one as well. It's not like zero or two every time. It's, and it, it seems comes down to preference. Yeah, and it seems like players have been cutting True Silver Champion. Right. Uh, for like, you know, the Kings Let and the Cog Hammer, think. but we did see that Nairia was playing the True Silver Champion. Yeah, True Silver surprisingly effective against Freeze Mage. You don't really consider it as a, as the usual win conditions, but it helps you heal out of range and do damage. And now Nairia has to say like, is this Ice Barrier? Is this Ice Block? Uh, it is a barrier. It is the barrier. Yeah. Ice Barrier is actually weaker than uh, Ice Block here, because Purple needs an answer right now to deal with the board. That's right. Oh, okay. well, answer to the board? Is that what you asked for? Because he dude. just got it. Oh, they definitely trade the Loot Hoarder first because your Emperor can reduce that card as well. Yep, and he could have also picked up a Doomsayer. Yeah. With a full board, that would have been Very nice. absolutely great. Alright, so Nyria can't actually play any minions in this current board state because it's nope. full. Oh, what a <laughs> minion! That would have been. been crazy if he's able to. Whoa. Okay. Arcanta. That's I mean, he, he can play it, and then I mean, what if he picks up Flame Strike, and then he clears the board? Yeah, he needs to pick up a Natsu right now. Doomsayer is not quite. Oh, Doomsayer Frost Nova. Second Frost Nova. That is insane. And you know what? If he's he's most likely be able to reduce Alex Straza, pick up Burn. He might even be able to like one turn kill his opponent if like wow. it ends up being the case there. Okay. Oh my, this is just turning around. How do you navigate this too? Because he's got five mana. You like you said, you could go for the Doomsayer no, plays. I guess what he's thinking right now is whether to pop the Shredder and then kill that one as well with the yeah. Emperor. He doesn't get the discount, but does he really need the discount? Probably not. It's right now, just play the survival game. Wow. He can't kill the Doomsayer without equality. Yeah, equality seems like it's the only option here. And equality is more of a Chinese secret paladin's tech choice. Right. It's not really anything else. <laughs> you can use the muster. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Talk about being stuck in the mud. It looked like Nyria was ready to end it, but instead, mm. Purple's the one potentially going to swing this. Uh, Tyrion, oh. such a powerful card, but no space on the on the board to play it. All right. He's going to go Alex Straza aggressively. All right, sets up the Akala of Pain to deal with uh, potential Tyrion to pop the, uh, um, you know, Divine Shield. Dr. Dr. Boom, Boom, though. Oh, man. So, yeah, Tyrion needs to get in the way of Alex Straza. Yeah, Nyria getting some great draws, but it might be too late. I don't know. I mean, he still has Ice Barrier and Ice Block to stall for potential more burn. He has yet to pick up some of his other uh, right. spells that he could but really help But the thing is, with. like, Purple can use his Freeze to freeze Nyria's face and actually prevent him from, you know, 
uh, interacting with. Wow, oh, there you go. Oh, that's great draw. Yeah. Please or dice ice that Tyrion. Yeah, I mean, just throw crossbow face. Crossbow dice oh. land. It does effectively the same thing. Okay. Yeah, that's true. And now he gets to get full damage here with the Alex Straza. Now, Rio, did he also use his Peacekeeper? Yeah, right. yeah he uses yeah, Peacekeeper he for Tempo peacekeeper, on yeah. the uh, right. anti kill bot. And that ends up being a drawback that Nairio was not really accounting for, the Alex Straza attacking. It's oh. obviously not going to do it. Oh, no. Victory. And that's it. Wow. The series is tied. We're going to game five. Purple with a breath of relief. And Nairio, he's the one that's kind of losing momentum here. We're going to Rogue yeah. versus the Paladin to wrap things up. Oh, what a series. Wow. I'm so excited right now. This is just... Oh, th th <laughs> these two amazing players going at it. Brilliant plays from both sides. So back and forth. And it's all yeah. going to come down to this Paladin against the Rogue. Yeah, this is exactly what you want to see in the last match of the day, right? Yeah. And it's an elimination match. Oh, man. That's right. Players winning with awkward hands, uh, really strong technical play and control decks. Very weird picks like this Rogue from Purple. This series has it all. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. So make sure, again, hashtag HWC 2015. Let us know some of your thoughts, uh, as well as who you're voting for, like AM win or EU win. In this case, we can go ahead and say that uh, for now, whoever comes out ahead could be just winning one point in that, de uh, that debate, right? EU versus NA. It'll be like... Uh, yeah, maybe a tick over for Canada, or maybe a tick over for EU. Like That's Canada. true. I, I mean, know. both Tice we and Hotform have what? already advanced, but no. hey, we just I need that one more point. One honor. more person. Rogue not on the coin. Oh. Nyria does have uh, that extra coin and card. Yep. Yeah. Having the coin means your opponent doesn't have the coin, so it's very it's helpful. But Purple does have the backstab SI7, yeah. as, along with the and Phantom, the Phantom knives. knives. That's pretty much the best possible <laughs> three card combination for Purple right here. Phantom knife, Knives extremely important against the deck, like the one that Nairia is playing. Right, and whoa, Nairia actually only keeps the Mysterious Challenger in his yep. hand. Let's see what else he finds. Just, that's a zombie challenge. Not so that's, that's not too bad. Yeah. Reasonable. Yeah, Zombie Chow is really powerful to control the board. And again, Mysterious Challenger Paladin just cares about the early state board for turns one through five. That, then it wants to hit power minions to end the game. Almost very similar to how Hunter functions um, with the high main, you know, relative to how when it starts flipping the switch. In this case, hero powering is uh, definitely very good for purple, just because he sees that his opponent's taking it slow. Yeah, I'm actually a tiny bit surprised that he didn't choose to swing at the at the zombie out there, just in case there was a mini bot coming or or uh, even a juggler. Mm -hmm. I mean, no time good. like the present. Yeah. Seize the board. Yeah, and he does get it. Nairia, <laughs> now he has a concentration. So yeah. now we know that it's in the deck, but unfortunately for him, he didn't draw it in the last game. The true silver champ is gonna work really, really well. That's right. The SSM. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. He would love to keep the coin for the turn five mysterious challenger, but against the dash side, that true silver is probably too good to pass up. Right. Once again, it's all about removing the rogue's minions, right? That's and right. You make the hand very awkward. Yeah, and purple doesn't have any more minions in his hand. Let me yeah, he was hoping for an opportunity to have a minion stick, because again, like you said, um, we want to be able to use Blessing of Kings earlier on, and then they finally deal with it, they sap it, Mysterious Challenger comes out, then that's where like you finally put the, the oh, dagger through the no. heart. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, no. oh man, that is Whoa. potentially disastrous, because yeah. Purple, not only does he have something to play Snap right off. now... But it's like yeah. perfect play. Uh, Purple had no play. Yeah, no play. Oh. SI7 gets to hit the face. Oh. Three daggers to the, uh, to the heart. <laughs> that wasn't just one. <laughs> okay. But Miria picking up another okay. mysterious challenger. Back to back challengers. There's two things about these challengers. The first one is that obviously you get that amazing amount of secrets, but the second thing is that after you played both of the challengers, Ooh. there's probably not going to be any secrets remaining in your deck, so every single draw after that is going to be a, a good one. Oh, that's uh -oh. a good observation. Yeah. Purple's going full rogue. More spells, no yeah. minions. And, uh,. And I like the pair in Nairia's hand more yeah. than the pairs in Purple's hand. One mysterious sound so comes sorry. out. None of your yeah, business. that's the first one. And keeping the coin, even though the, the Master of Battle wasn't all that great on turn three, the turn five mysterious challenge is so powerful right now. Now, it's only three secrets because Nairia is holding the single copy of Redemption. Yeah, he does have that one Redemption in his hand right now. <laughs> there is Sap coming out for Purple. Right. Yeah, Sap to stall for time. Huh, even use the weapon. oil. 
to set up for a big flurry turn, perhaps? Interesting. Yeah, uh, probably just think of why not play it because the sprint will build his hand anyway. Oh, he's oh, low theft. Low theft to lock out future spells. That's yeah. also another thing too. Yeah. It's pretty funny that Naria chose to use the other mysterious challenger. So if purple is being a little bit perceptive, he knows like. he has both. Oh, that's it's true. true. <laughs> he did use the second one. I mean, but every little bit of information there. can help here. Mm -hmm. It's true. Oh. So competitive spirit does activate. And Purple is also out with one sap. He's going to try to climb back through a flurry. Nairia, in the meantime, has that Lotheb to seal when, to try to seal the board whenever possible. That's very interesting. I did not expect the Competitive Spirit to pop out there. Because usually if you have three secrets, it's the, um, you know, uh, get down, Noble avenge, sacrifice, avenge. and then, you know, redemption. Redemption, redemption exactly, yeah. yeah. So he's not playing a <laughs> Repentance. Only one Repentance. Oh, Repentance, yeah, exactly. No Repentance. Yeah, yeah that Lotheb. So, so ooh, but he does have um, magic break to help add some spell power too. Oh, that, that can be useful. Wow, that is and like the perfect answer, right? That's yeah. a perfect answer against Lothab. You use all eight of your mana, but the Avenge is pretty much the knife juggler spirit yeah. lives on. Right? Plus three, plus two. That's right. Oh, that's, a, that's, no. that's a bad draw. But I mean, Nyria still has yeah. lots of power. He's got 19. 21 damage right now. <laughs> That's quite a bit. Well, I'm also looking at Purple's hand and going like, this flurry is going to be disaster. Yeah. How much so, damage does Purple have? So, like, how does Nyria navigate around potentially a huge blade flurry? Let me think. Well, the first was Lotheb to try to seal the board, but, I mean, Purple used minion combat and battle cries. <laughs> I wonder if you played Blessed of Kings on the 10-9. Right. Well, I guess in this case, he's just making the biggest, sturdiest board possible. Oh. But that oh. still oh. won't protect him oh. from a blade flurry. Oh. Going oh. <laughs> that was that's a lot of damage. <laughs> like, that web button is going to be absolutely massive. But you mean this might be lethal? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Whoa. you're right. Wait, Wait, I think you're right. Wait, no, no, there is a get 10, down. 16. There is a defender. But is there? he can use a 3-3 three, three to attack first, and that's going to activate that. That is exactly, that's exactly lethal. lethal. Purple, purple is going to survive. Oh, precisely. Oh, oh, oh my god. What was the series? That is what? insane. Are you serious? This game just wow. ended like that. Wow. Just like that, Purple lives on to fight another day and ends Nyria's <laughs> BlizzCon run with Rogue of all classes. Oh, man. What happened? 20, 20 how much damage? <laughs> 24. Out of nowhere? 24. Exactly 24. When he had only oh. spells just a couple turns before, one sprint helped him gather the resources necessary, and Nyria couldn't put on the pressure. He tried to go for a low that play to potentially seal it. Just didn't work out. Again, wow. uh, that heal bot and SI being able to answer it and have a minion stick was the key. Nyria didn't want to like spend his turn clearing, right? That's the that's yeah. the thing. But I it's one of those sayings. You want to always keep Rogue's board clear because of that potential. Yeah, what a, so this is such an amazing <laughs> series. We had eight series today, and I, I in my opinion, we had the best one for last. Yeah. That was um, just mind blowing stuff. Great play on both sides, and you know, there's all these little small things that made it like what it was, like the one damage or the one draws, or like you know, some of these 50-50s. Really exciting moment, and I want to hear what Purple has to say off of that thrilling victory. Thanks so much, Frodan. I'm here with Purple, and uh, you would expect someone who won such an amazing match to be over the moon, but uh, tell me what you're thinking right now. I threw game two, and I don't care about the rest of the series. I just threw a game. I played I played terribly after the game. It was a one game. I had checkmate, and then I played heal bot block instead of just block. If I just block, he double ice lances. I, he pops me at two, and I heal bot to ten, and, I, and fireball. He, he takes two turns of fatigue, and he loses. So I played like crap. I feel bad about it. Well, a moment like that has to be turned into something positive for you to continue on in this tournament and for it to be useful to you. So what is uh, what is your takeaway from this then as you continue on? Uh, I guess I get another chance to actually prove I'm not terrible at the game. So that's that's like good news. I get to try not to miss play next match. So looking forward to that. Cheers to that. Well, I look forward to your continued play. I'm going to hand it back to the casters and uh, we'll be seeing you tomorrow. So thank you so much. All right, so, uh, you know, Purple is harshest critic. We were talking about how that match was really difficult to play, especially, you know, 
from the side of you don't know what information the freeze mage has on the other side and you have to do your best but at the same time it's like he said too you live another day and show that you're you're better than your mistakes right you're you can be as good as you are on your best day yeah purple said that he wants to prove that he's not terrible at the game but he's done that plenty of times yeah. so i think he played brilliantly he yeah. won the america's championship it's just he needs to like just relax and just uh, play one game at a time that's right I love I love his honesty as well. You know, being able to be very real for himself. Uh, does this mean win something more to you too, as well as because as, purple being one of your friends, Moss? Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of sad being like he was so hard on himself, man. He should uh, really focus on like his good plays too, right? Mm. Sometimes you know when you have that one game you misplayed, you just that that's just stuck in your mind for the rest of the series, right? Sure. But sure. I'm glad he pulled through, and uh, hopefully he gets a good rest. And um, comes back tomorrow and wins the next match. That's right. Because uh, because with that victory, Purple will be going to the runner-up match of Group D. I believe we're going to take a look at how everything has transpired. Uh, because we do have four groups decided and only three players remaining in each. In Group A, we started off with Tice taking a win as well as No. But earlier on the, uh, later on, we had Jab take out No tomorrow. He will await the loser of that winner's match. That's right. And for Group B, we had Kronich and Zoro uh, move on in the upper bracket. And Life Coach fought brilliantly today, and uh, he's still in the tournament. He will be fighting against the loser of that uh, winner's bracket match. That's right. A lot of stories there. The winner of APAC, can he continue on his momentum? In Group C, we had Oskaka and Hopform, two of the more uh, interesting players to follow because of Patron Warrior for Oskaka and Hopform with his very weird rogue lineup as well. Neilio had a really intense match with Love CX. We saw that, you know, the constant uh, roping, uh, Neil rope, if you will. Uh, in Group D, we had Ping Ping Ho, the Shaman God, up against Dai Meng. That's going to be happening tomorrow, and Purple will see the loser of that match to grab his second place spot. Of course, we have two more days of broadcast. What, what a really fun time. Do you guys have any last words you want to say before we close out the broadcast? Um, no, I just really enjoyed the games. Uh, my favorite minion is now officially the 2-1 Hoot Hoot. And, uh, ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, for, for people who don't know, like, Monk was trying to translate <laughs> Iron Beak Owl in Chinese. Yeah. Uh, Maz and I both speak some Chinese here, yeah. Mandarin, so we're like, we understood what he was saying. He didn't know the name of it, so he just said the 2-1 that goes right. Hoot Hoot but, uh, but, while he was explaining it. But the thing is, the fun. Chinese community that Monk explained to me at the end, they do um, say that the owl is the Hoot Hoot. Like, oh, that's know, their, they just that's call their it. nickname yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Like we call it like uh, the disguise toaster to get down, right? Exactly, makes sense. Exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Savitz? <laughs> I've been really enjoying all the games today and yesterday as well, and two more days to go. It's really awesome. Yes, we have all the nine classes represent. Tomorrow, two shamans going to be playing again. I'm just overloaded with excitement. Oh, he brought it out. He's overloaded with excitement. That's really good stuff. I can't trump that. So with that, it's concluded here from the desk today. Savitz and Maz, it's been a pleasure watching these excellent games with you guys today. Let's go to the tavern to hear Rachel's thoughts. Thank you guys so much. It was an amazing first day here at opening weekend as eight of our 16 players met their competition. All players will be returning to the tournament to continue their matches throughout the week, but uh, we had our first eliminations today. So not all of them, four of them did go home. Uh, we have lots more games coming back at 9 a.m. Pacific. See who else gets eliminated and who else is continuing on to the main stage at BlizzCon. And don't forget, you can find all the action on BlizzCon.com. That's it for today's Hearthstone broadcast. Check out these highlights, and we'll see you all tomorrow.